All right, guys. So we're going to talk about more emotions today. Um, and it's Thursday, so we do emotional body stud work. And what we're going to focus on today is emotional boundaries. And emotional boundaries are extremely important because as the first step, we start to recognize our feelings. We're going to recognize what feelings we have. We're going to have to start to take care of these feelings that we have. We're gonna to have to recognize what is healthy and unhealthy for our emotional well-being. Now, boundaries can be very tricky because oftentimes we'll violate our own boundaries in order to serve somebody else. This is wrong. You need to take care of your own boundaries first and foremost. And if you can help others, as long as it fits within your boundaries, it's your service to them to do so. If you cannot take care of your boundaries or take care of yourself with, or take, take care of others within your boundaries, it is not in service to do so. We are here to be in service to self as well as service to others. And so we need to have healthy boundaries and be responsible with our boundaries in order to serve others better. And so what this looks like, this looks like is, is if somebody hurts your feelings and they know that they hurt, that your feelings are sensitive over this, they're violating one of your boundaries of like coming into your space and taking advantage of you emotionally. And in response to that, we have to say and tell them, hey, my feelings are really hurt by what you've done. I, I don't like it. It doesn't make me feel good when you talk to me this way or you do these things to me. That puts it back on their shoulders, their responsibility to know how they have impacted and hurt and violated your space. Now, however they respond to that, that's them. And that's up to them and that's on their shoulders. I'm going to be doing my own self-healing and I'm going to be recovering from this. But you need to know that what you did was hurtful you shouldn't treat other people like that. So, you know, other people don't have to go through the same experiences in which you're putting on to me. Now, um, when we start to work within ourselves and to have healthy boundaries, we're going to start to see that our boundaries have been violated for a very long time. And the first, the hardest push person to push back on against our boundaries is our partners. We give so much for our partners that that turns into them taking advantage of us in some way, even if we allow it, even if it's by choice on our part. Hey, can you do this for me? Yeah, I'll do that for me. And you're juggling everything else. You're like, yeah, yeah, let me, I'll do that. I'll do that. And then you drop your balls and you come over here and you do that for them. And then you like let go of all of these other things. It's okay to be like, I have to juggle these tasks. I don't have space to be able to do that right now. When I get some of this, this energy taken care of, when I work through some of this, then I can have more space for this. Saying yes to me does not mean I'm saying no to you. That means that I'm telling you what I can and can't handle within my realm and my capacity as a being. That is a respectful thing. If I don't tell you what I can and can't handle, you have no way to know on how you can handle or work around with me or support me or any of that. You need to have the communication from me about what I'm feeling, what I'm going through, what's going on internally, so you can have, or others can have a better understanding of how that they can work together within this to make this feel good. Especially our partners. Our partners are like the biggest thing. They're so close and so dear to us and we'll do almost anything for our partners, even if it hurts us in the long run. That is wrong. We'll do almost anything for them as long as it doesn't violate our boundaries. That is right. And our partners will do the same thing. And together we'll work more actively and consciously because when my emotional boundaries aren't violated and I can say no to you without you like guilt tripping me or making me feel bad about myself, then I know that you're gonna be understanding and you're gonna be respectful of my space when I say no. And I'm gonna tell you, look, babe, I'm hungry. I haven't, I've been working all day, I'm very tired, I need a shower. Can you please make food for me while I take a shower? Maybe they can be upset about that. I have to make food every day. I have to do this, I have to do that. You're asking for help and you're asking for them 
to like work with you on your needs to be met. And if they choose not to do that, that is their choice and that is on them. I'm still gonna take care of my needs. I'll go take a shower and I'll make my own food. But I'm gonna recognize that you're not on my team and you're not being supportive when I'm asking for help. If you ask them for help and they're like, babe, I need you to make, can you make food for me? I'm so tired, I had work with so long, I need to take a shower. I need to like get some food in me. Can you please do this for me? And they're like, I can't. I'm so sorry, like I can't. I understand that you need the food. I understand that you need help. I have a million and one things going on. The office is calling me. The kids are calling me. I got to do bedtime routine. I got bath times going on. I'm sorry. Like I'll get to it once I get some of these other tasks that I'm working on done. I encourage you to take a nice long bath so that I can maybe get some of this done. So maybe I can work towards that goal and I can have that stuff done for you by the end of the night. But at this moment, you putting that extra burden on me, I can't take that on because I'm going to let down the kids. I'm going to let down my other responsibilities to my own personal and professional experiences. And that's okay. And then they, they, their response can be one, they can be hurtful or understanding. That's them. They can be mad and go take that bath. They can be grumpy about it and they can be hangry. But that's understandable. You haven't eaten all day. You've had a stressful day. You need a bath. You need food. You need sleep. You're going to be upset. I have to know that. And understand that and not allow that to hurt my character or to like fine i'll just drop everything what i'm doing and i'll i'll cater to that and take care of that no no, no. i'm got to take care of this first and once this is done i'll put that and take the care of that and if i can work to make these things fit in there better obviously that's what i'm going to do because i care so much as a being i'm going to work in managing my responsibilities so that way i can help other people with their responsibilities Emotional boundaries are very, very sensitive. When my feelings get hurt, I feel unloved, I feel uncared about, I feel unsupported, I feel lonely or feel isolated, I feel upset, angry, I have all of these feelings when my boundaries are not being taken care of. These are very obvious signs and symptoms that you need to stop, meditate, relax, reassess what is being violated, what is being asked about you, what is being too much and hold on from you by others that's violating your boundaries. Again, saying yes to me does not mean saying no to you. If your partner asks you to have sex tonight and you don't want to have or you're incapable of any reason you choose to say no, that's okay. There's no need to feel guilty or resent or anything that comes up for that, shame or anything. Because the answer is no, this is my body and my space, and my energy and my stuff. And so I have the entitlement to, I have the entitlement to myself and my own sacred energy to choose what and how I give that to others. And maybe tonight's not a good night. I can say no and his feelings can be hurt or her feelings can be hurt. I mean, they're just going through rejection. How do all of us handle rejection? sensitive you know but saying yes to me does not mean i'm saying no to you i still love you very much i still care about you very much does not mean i don't care about you or i don't love you i need to take care of me i don't have the space for it i'm not feeling connected to you we just got out of an argument like all these things might have been going on that may make you have to push through your boundaries in order to give to your partner again that is not okay you have to be willing consenting capable to bring your presence to the space to bring your all to the space so having healthy boundaries pushing back to other people is very very important understanding what your boundaries are and what they look like to you is different to every individual your capacity they're able to show up that's different to every individual when your feelings are upset and you're hurt that is a symptom or a sign that your boundaries are being violated you see that like people are hurtful to others and that hurts you that's a sign that your boundaries are being violated because one of my boundaries is if i'm around then there's not, not going to be any animosity or anger or yelling or hurt energy that's to others too i don't want to see you not take it out on me and then go take it out on the kids that's not okay and i'm going to come over there and i'm going to step in and we're going to have words because we're not going to be doing that we're not going to be hurting other beings doesn't matter if they're children or adults. We're not allowing 
other people to pass that forward. And that's a boundary that I have within my space. If I see that, I'll talk to you about it and we'll address it. And we can talk, you can, you can have words with me. We'll talk about this directly. We'll, we'll, we'll work on it together, but we're not gonna go and we're not gonna take it out on others because we feel unheard or unmet, or our needs are being not being met, that we're gonna take it out on others. And again, if your needs aren't being met and your feelings are hurt, there's something that has to be worked on internally. If your partner has hurt feelings because of rejection, there's something they have to work on internally. Maybe feeling rejection, maybe handling rejection, maybe something in any form where rejection is sensitive to them. They need to work on that. You can help them, you can point that out to them and you can say, hey, you know, I recognize that rejection is you know, very difficult or painful to you. You're very sensitive to that. Is there something that I can do to let you know that I'm not in the mood or I'm not able to bring this stuff to you without it triggering your rejection and then that coming back as abuse on me and you blaming me and you saying mean words of being hurtful to me. Communicating with your partner in a healthy way. I shouldn't have to feel bad about saying no. I should be able to say no without the remorse or the guilt or like the animosity that can come with that. Then your partner has an opportunity to recognize what they're doing to hurt you, to violate those boundaries even more by being pushy, by pushing through your nose and trying to convince you to say yes, by taking their hurt feelings out on you and then blaming you and putting you down and belittling you and judging you and all of these different things that they might try to do in order to get you to like say yes and violate a boundary. None of that's okay. None of that's healthy. What healthy looks like is like, do you want to have sex tonight? No, I don't want to have sex tonight. I've been having a long day and I'm very sorry. I'm just not feeling emotionally present or capable or connected or exhausted, whatever the reasonings. Partner should be like, oh, okay, you know, I understand that. Um, you know, I, I do have some feelings, <laughs> feeling a little rejected. You know, I've asked you for like the third night in a row this week, or it's been two weeks now, whatever the time frame. I just keep feeling a little bit rejected. And so I just wanted to let you know I have some feelings coming up that um, I'm starting to feel like maybe I can't satisfy you sexually, or we're not connected enough to where we can be intimate romantically or, um, or sexually. And I want to work with you to meet some of those, those needs so that way we, we can have more intimate um, relationship, connectivity. Then your partner can say, you know what? Actually, there's been something that's weighing on my mind. Last time we got in a fight, you took your energy out on me and you said a lot of mean things to me. That really hurt my feelings and made me disconnect from you. Made me not want to have intimacy with you. Oh, okay, now I know what has happened that's causing this, that's preventing this, that's keeping me here. So I can say, okay, well, let's talk about that. You know, let me apologize for my actions. Let me take responsibility for what I said. Let me work on myself and growing within myself so that way you can feel safe and secure around me that I'm not just gonna be abusive and take advantage of you physically, emotionally, or mentally. And that, yeah, that's all abuse. Then I can, we can work together and then you can feel connected, you can feel safe, you can feel loved again. And then that can translate into maybe more intimate, intimate connectivity. That's what I'm like, we're working towards. Uh, maybe that'll translate into more like emotional safety and security because that's what we're working towards. I should be able to talk to you and say, hey, my feelings are hurt. And then you be able to like come to me and say, well, how can I help? What's going on? What am I doing? Or what's going on in your environment? How can I be here to support you? That builds connectivity and it builds safety and security that you can communicate with your partner with emotional intelligence and say, hey, this is what I'm going through. And know that your partner is going to be receptive to that. They're not going to be reactive. They're not going to be judgmental. They're not going to put you down or like ignore it or make you feel unheard over it. This is why we have partners. Now, this is growth. This is challenging. Everybody, this is challenging for everybody. Nobody's just going to walk into a, a relationship and be like, boom, I have all the emotional intelligence. I have all the security. I'm like very strong and very passionate and very driven. That's very, very rare. And if you have that, congratulations. Like you're a leader. 
You need to teach others your secrets so that the rest of us can learn how to be able to voice ourselves without feeling remorseful or judgmental or shameful, uh, how to be able to have strength in our emotions and cry when it's time to cry without feeling like we're being put down by our environment. Males aren't supposed to cry. What are you doing, baby? You know, putting us down, it's not just male energy, it's female energy too. There's so much abuse that happens in the emotional realm when we're able to push back and saying, hey, you know, the words that you're choosing are really mean. They are my feelings and they're not accepted in my space. If you're going to be around me, you need to change your language. You need to start to use respectful words and you need to start talking to me with some respect. Otherwise, I need you to get out of my space and don't come back until you're ready to behave yourself in a manner that's conducive to my environment and respectful to you and me. Like we're, you're just putting yourself and making yourself look bad and it's very disrespectful and dishonorable. I know that you're better than that. I know that this isn't you. Let me help you. Like, what is going on? Talk to me about something deeper. Is there another issue? Is there something else that's making you feel this way? Getting into the core of that so that way there's not just constant boundaries being violated back and forth between us and our partners because we don't know how to communicate what we're feeling emotionally. And we can break through this communication barrier by having healthy boundaries then we can start to say, hey, you know, um, I'd love to help you, but that's actually, it goes against one of my belief systems. Um, and I'm here to help you and I'm here to support you any way that does not violate my belief systems or my boundaries. And for me to like have sex with you when I don't feel that violates my belief system of like, I need intimate relation, intimate intimacy to have sexual connectivity. If I just like, open myself up to you without first like communicating and knowing you and understanding and healing through some of our past, then I'm not doing myself justice. I'm just teaching you that it's okay to violate me and take advantage of me. And then I'm still going to give you other or more of me or whatever else. This isn't healthy for me. I need different. I need more. And being okay with, they're not going to like that. They, we don't take that very well. Anybody, none of us take that well. There's nobody who takes that well. I've never met anybody. I, I mean, it, and if they exist, they exist. I'm not saying that doesn't exist. It's just very rare and very hard for us to have and be vulnerable and that vulnerable emotions to be like, hey, do you want to have intimacy or do you want to have sex with me? And they're like, no, I don't. That's rejection. That means that I might translate into something that's wrong with me. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not happy enough. Maybe I'm not like smart or wise or brave or like strong or developed or mature or maybe I'm not know how the looks. I can like translate that into some kind of self-destructive behavior, shame, guilt, like anger, whatever. And that is not responding to that really well. Really well is saying, you know, okay, I have, I have feelings that are coming up over it. Um, I do want to talk to you about my feelings, um, because I do want to work together. And I see that, you know, when you reject me, it makes me feel hurt. And then I start to use indirect language and my indirect language puts you down. And I'm very sorry for that. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm trying to communicate to you. That my feelings are hurt from being rejected and it's okay. We don't have to have intimacy. We don't have to have sex. I just want to let you know I'm sensitive to rejection. I want you to still say, be true to you and be respectful to yourself because I love you to the point where I want you to be happy and you to be healthy to his maximum self. And if that means that I have to suffer through some rejection then I'll work on myself and I'll grow so that way me being rejected isn't so impactful. That way I can recognize, okay, well, not tonight. All right, baby, well, I understand. Um, I hope you have a good night. You know, let's give some cuddles. Maybe we can have some like hugs, some cuddle time. You know, um, maybe we can watch a movie. We can do something like less sexual, but still intimate. We have five love languages. Let's work on some of the other ones besides physical touch. You know, maybe we can talk about like good experiences that we had and get that communication flowing again. Maybe you can like make her that dinner that she was hoping for, or wake up and make her a breakfast or something. You can use other language besides just intimacy to share with your partner love. Communicate through these different channels and don't make it so much about just like, if you're not doing things for me, then I don't think you appreciate me. Well, maybe I don't show appreciation by acts of service. 
Maybe I show appreciation by being protective and touching and holding hands. Maybe I, maybe I show appreciation by like bringing you gifts. I pick up, I pick wild flowers when I'm out and I bring those to you. I'm like, hey, I thought about, I saw this. Find random stuff at the gas station. Hey, I, you know, I saw this. I was thinking about you. Maybe that's how I show you my love. Well, I don't receive gifts. Gifts mean nothing to me. And so now you're rejecting somebody else's love because you have a expectation on how they should love you. No, no, no. It's seeing that. It's seeing, thank you for showing and taking the time to think about me, to care, recognizing that that's how they're giving you love and they're trying to like share their love with you and accepting that and being open and receptive to that so you can communicate love on a different level that's not just sexual or physical base. We can communicate love with our words, with our actions. We can communicate love with gifts. We can communicate love by just like spending time together and giving them our attention. Hey, how was your day? What did you do today? Talk to me about the experience you had at, at work. You should come home from your day and recount your day with your partner. Your partner should be excited to hear about that because they love you so much that they want to know what all of your experiences are. Like regardless if they were present or not, they want to hear like, oh you talked to Carrie what did Carrie say and then like oh how was that how's her family and you can like ask more questions oh okay well what that what did you do next oh you went and got a snack what did you eat for your snack oh that was good did you drink some like what did you have a drink or did you just a snack oh, it's just a snack did you eat did you meet anybody did you talk to anybody just you got a snack and went back to your to your desk that was good okay well then what happened you know oh you had some calls that was good anything exciting in those calls you know is there any experiences that were good or bad or hurtful? Then you can start to have more communication and dive deeper into your, your partner of what they were doing throughout their day instead of it being so like, how was your day? It was good. Same day, every day. You know, it's Groundhog's Day. Every day is the same. It's, it's not every day is the same. There are subtle differences within our day that change it. And those subtle differences are important and they should be cared about. <clears throat> We want people in our life who are going to care about these subtle differences and show us that they care about us so much that they want to know about the conversation I have with Carrie. Even if it was just about her family, even if it was just like what we would consider mundane or work talk, <clears throat> we want to know, we want to have somebody in our life who cares about all aspects of our experience and shares, and we have that opportunity to share in that with them and with ourselves. And this starts with having good emotional boundaries. Having healthy boundaries, we're going to be able to show up for our partner and for ourselves. And we're going to feel good the whole time, the whole time. Again, when your boundaries are being violated, that's going to translate into unhealthy emotional um, expression. <clears throat> you're going to be upset. You're going to be angry. You're going to be hurt. You're going to feel violated. You're going to feel gross. Like these things are going to happen. Pay attention to this and saying, what do I need to have healthier boundaries? Sometimes it's just communication. Sometimes it's saying no. Sometimes it's gonna hurt other people's feelings. These are all okay. And it's understandable that this might happen in other things. Pushback is what you're, what's expected. But again, saying yes to me is not saying no to you. And I love you very much and I can say yes to me without rejecting you and saying no to you. So just know that within yourself, as you continue to grow emotionally with your emotional intelligence, that whatever emotions you're going through are important for you to learn and experience and to translate and share with your partner. So that way they can understand where your emotions are, what's healthy for you, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and what works for them and it's healthy for them and it's good for them. So we can start to work together to give each other the emotional connectivity that we need to make us feel the best about ourselves and within each other it's respect it's, this is how we serve others by communicating with them on their level with their responsibilities and their boundaries and respect to them as individuals i don't communicate with you for me i communicate with you because i care about you for you i want you to be good i want you to be happy i want you to feel safe and secure and all of that so <clears throat> that's going to be all of the communication um, about emotions tonight. And so, again, boundaries are really important to have. And it's very, very important that when you set boundaries, you know that not everybody's going to be happy with those boundaries. That's okay. 
having strong boundaries is the first step in securing your space and keeping your sit to your space safe from it's like psychic attack, negative and unwanted energy, violation, trauma, abuse. These different negative energy forms are going to stay out of your space because you have healthy boundaries and you're not allowing them to come in and violate you. All right. So um, I hope you were, I hope this was helpful. I hope you were able to learn a little bit more. I hope you're able to see some insight on your own boundaries. We're going to continue to work on them. I don't expect anybody to just be like, boom, I have all the boundaries. It's a work in progress and it's, it's hard to have boundaries. It can be very difficult to have boundaries, especially when we've given so much. We might not even know what it looks like to have boundaries and what it looks like when other people push back on us and there's a fear of conflict within all of that. It's very like entangled. Um, so just know that it's understandable and that we'll just keep working on it and we'll, we'll chip away at this a little bit more and hopefully together we'll like all grow into a state where we have very developed emotional intelligence and a very strong sense of boundaries and respect for ourselves and other people's space around us. All right. I hope you guys have a good week. And I'll